Hello and welcome back to the Scale Modeling Cafe and welcome to part two of the Clearprop Key 51 Sonia in 1 to 144 scale. Now a little bit different with this video, uh, it's going to be the entire project. It's only a little small kit so uh, why not? Starting off with the cockpit obviously and you can see the beautiful detail. It uh, it really is quite phenomenal and will definitely benefit from some careful painting so after a base coat using MRP uh, interior green out with the brush and all the little details were painted you can just see there the optivisor on the top of my head sneaking into shot absolutely vital because as you can see it's tiny So the paint I'm using is uh, Ammo of MIG paint, it's uh, their acrylic, it brushes really really well using one of their small brushes as well and I'm just picking out bits of you know the black details, some of the leather and now some of the khaki which I didn't have any khaki paint so I just mixed that up from a bit of brown and a bit of green. And believe it or not there's some uh, decals to put in the cockpit actually the decals are really extensive there's bits on the sidewall there's obviously the instrument panel which is really nice there's this kind of radio thing which is uh, eventually gets placed on top of the um what do you call it the sort of fuselage canopy insert thing that's the thing that um deletes most of the detail actually on with some washes so this is just uh, mixed um, in fact there you can see the uh, the radio gear yeah the washes are just mixed from um, ammo mig oil paints and there is the final cockpit all done i think you'll agree highly highly detailed Now for the construction, so the cockpit bits were placed in one of the fuselage halves and just glued into place before bringing the two fuselage halves together. There you can actually see how, how small these things really are. Using my usual method of the black super glue, hit with accelerator and then sand it down. This really speeds up the process because you can uh, deal with the fuse loss seams pretty much instantly and also no shrinkage at all it's obviously not welding the parts together like traditional sort of extra thin type glues so uh, I'm not going to get any go seams in the future which is a relief so just using the flory sanding sticks um, just no real pressure just uh, rubbing it across and uh, what I'll do is polish that out all the scratches out with um, this is the blue sponge and getting finer and finer all very well worn actually these sanding sticks the plastic sands really nicely a few hairline gaps here at the tail just dealt with with Mr. Surfacer and a bit of thinner and this is their normal thinner I don't recommend using the um, the rapid drying thinners. It's just far too hot. It'll eat into the plastic. I've made that mistake before. So here's the kind of cockpit decking going on. Again, using the black super glue and then hitting it with accelerator here. And then that dries pretty much instantly and then it's a relatively simple job of just sanding everything flush it's not perfect fit didn't expect it to be perfect with these sort of cockpit decking things because there is a even this small scale and with the cockpit in there is still a slight bit of flexibility there but uh, using the super glue means yes it dries instantly but it also dries quite hard and we can go in with the sanding sticks and we can just 
make all the contours exactly the same so it's pretty much seamless and with all that sanding it's inevitable some of those incredibly fine panel line details are going to disappear so out with the dymo tape and the scriber so this scriber is based on the uh, well it's actually trumpeters but many manufacturers including Ravel do the same one and I'm sure you can find it in another brand if you uh, can't get those ones I like it because it is finer than the Tamiya scriber and in this scale this is exactly what we need it's going to scratch the plastic a little bit so just go in there polish off the high spots and deal with it that way right onto the wings then so the lower wing is one piece it's clear and again using the black super glue it was joined together and the reason I did this is because um, well I was trying to build it in a weekend which I managed the uh, the seam line needs to disappear it's not on any of the panel lines which is a bit of a shame I thought they could have done it on the control surfaces which would have saved a lot of effort but um, yeah we'll go in hit it with accelerator sand it all down and then do a rescribe job the reason that they molded it in clear plastic is there is a small window in the middle of the fuselage and uh, I did get the masking set for it uh, it just means that uh, once that's all masked off it's going to be completely seamless around that window and it is going to protect the sort of glass you're not going to need to do any sanding or filling or anything so when the flurry sanding sticks again And eventually that'll all be polished up. And then it will be rescribed. I did use a ruler and I did use some of the Dymo tape in some parts but uh, the fit was so good that uh, the sanding um, really didn't destroy very much so most of it was done freehand as you can see I also took the opportunity to deepen the sort of panel lines around the ailerons and things because they are uh, quite shallow actually now for the main event in any model aeroplane kit joining the wing to the fuselage and the fit was really good tailplanes are a butt joint which you might think is a little bit sort of limited run if you like and uh, and a bit awkward however you could sort of drill and pin if you needed to but I thought I'd go um, and just do it as the manufacturer intended and actually it uh, it resulted in quite a solid joint the the joint is really good so the contact surface is uh, pretty much all of it and uh, it holds really well and it is really strong I just drilled out the exhausts just um, just for a little bit more depth and just reduce the width of the exhaust cans and you can see the canopies are on a mast the wheel spats are on as well all fitted really well now I did have a bit of disaster on the green one in that I managed to crack the canopy so um, that was sprayed black as you can see there after it was all sanded down to get rid of any cracks and, uh, and masked up on the grey one where the canopy survived and it was my fault by the way not uh, not clear props fault the interior uh, green colour was sprayed on first 
and then both models ended up being primed. This is Mr. Surfacer 1500, Mr. Surfacing Primer or something like that. I can't remember the name of it now. But it's my primer of choice. I want, uh, sometimes I don't use primer, but I wanted to use primer just really because of the uh, seams. Because sometimes, even though using super glue, you think it's absolutely seamless. Um, you can get bubbles in the super glue and things like that. So it's a good way of checking those seams. And also, it's a good way of just homologizing, if that's a word, the undercolor. So obviously, I've used um, a bit of black there to check the seams on the wing. I've used green over the canopy, that kind of thing. Okay, my original idea for the grey one was to paint the grey and then using the Molotov or Molotov masking pen, which is masking fluid with a with a sort of felt tip nib, to draw on the sort of grey surrounds to leave the green uh, splodges. So that's me just applying the green there. You can see the masking fluid. But as you'll see at the end, this wasn't the final scheme. You'll see why in a second. So this is the MRP Japanese Army Green going on. You see, actually, it doesn't look, it looks too bright green there. So I did modify the colour on the on the all-over green one. So we'll just let that dry and then it came to remove the um, the masking fluid and that looked absolutely terrible so it was all sanded off the gray was repainted and I went for the other scheme that was in the uh, in the box and actually I really like this scheme anyway so the white areas on the wings were masked and sprayed with MRP white And I couldn't resist. The masking tape had to come off straight away. But it's MRP, so it dries almost instantly, actually. And there we are. The fuselage tail band actually came as a decal, but I thought, well, what I've got the white in the colour cup, let's just use a bit of, uh, to me, a flexible masking tape. And uh, I'll spray the white band as well. Again, straight in with removing the masks. Sorry about this, it's so small, it's... I had to zoom right in and it's difficult trying to keep it in shot. And there's the final base coat. Now, I thought of spraying the Hinamarus, but I thought, well, let's just use the decals. And actually, they performed really, really well. I was really pleased with how they sucked down to that really fine panel detail. I tend to roll a cotton bud over the top just to push it down and then just burnish the decal into the uh, into the surface detail. And then on with the solvent. And then what I tend to do is just use the tip of these really sharp tweezers just to go along the panel lines, just to help it all bed in. And this technique works really well. Just be very careful though, if the decal is too soft, it will tear. So you've got to time it right. I tend to do it, I'll put the, uh, I'll put the solvent on and then get the tweezers out straight away, just before it's had time to 
um, get too soft. It's all with the tail markings now. Now, there were a myriad of stencils as well, which were so tiny, I just, I took the decision, I'm not doing that. I couldn't be bothered. You know, sometimes sanity does has to prevail. This is such a comprehensive little kit. It's got absolutely everything in there. Again, something else that could have been sprayed were the wing walkways, but um, I thought, no, let's use the decals. They're performing really nicely, and it does save a lot of time. Did manage to get a tiny little um, tear in that one on the left, but uh, that was easily touched up. Just a little bit of paint. And again, sorry, I can't quite keep it in shot, but hopefully you'll forgive me because it is such a small thing. I did have to zoom right in. There's the other one on. And then these were tricky. Uh, I've managed to snap off the gun barrels. Um, and if I'm honest, I didn't bother replacing them. But the uh, the sort of red star decal that goes over the muzzle, it was so small it didn't want to conform. So I ended up hitting it with a bit of solvent just to soften it. And then as that started to work, it's magic, very carefully, just pushed it down into place. And that's it. They're all finished. Hi. I just thought I'd film a little sort of postscript, just to bookend the project. Start, this is the... Um, the first time I tried this, uh, we'll just see how it goes, but uh, I think it would bookend the project nicely. Obviously, we've got part one where I discuss my aims and everything, and part two, uh, sorry, the final part, I think it'd be quite nice just to sort of have a little bit of a wash up and offer my thoughts on, on how the project went. Right, what can I say about these little things? They are, aren't they tiny? Look, here they are, so small. That's why I took the photographs, um, which I'll put up at the end, with my kind of hand in there just to just to provide a bit of scale but they are really small um, my thoughts on the kits then uh, moldings are beautiful the internal detail is amazing it's such a shame that that really you cannot see anything in there nothing um, the canopy is relatively thick actually but I think even if it was um, they provided a vac form replacement you still wouldn't see anything in there but if they did a vac form replacement at least maybe you could cut the sections open and uh, have the canopy open which would be a really nice touch it's such a shame that all that beautiful detail and I think you'll agree it's absolutely stunning that beautiful detail is um, is missing or well, not missing but um, you know invisible the Parts breakdown was interesting, so the clear one piece lower wing I thought was a, ni a nice touch because you do have that tiny little window on the bottom, but the join line on the underside is not on the panel lines. I think maybe it would have been better if they had the ailerons and flaps and maybe wingtips separate. Um, it would have been easier because the join line is not on any seam line. Uh, sorry panel line and therefore you do have to put a little bit of effort in there just to completely eliminate that but you know it's basic modeling skill it's no hardship it just maybe would have been easier uh, with a slightly different parts breakdown 
the other thing, maybe separate wheels would have been uh, would have been better. Um, maybe not. But overall, I'm really pleased with the engineering of the kit, how it went together, the fit, and the overall look. The engine is really nicely detailed, but again, with that detail, you just can't see it because of the big prop. Uh, if I was to change one thing about the kit, uh, that would be the moulded on tail wheel. It would have been far better if they could have moulded it with an overextended um, uh, strut, which you could, uh, if they just moulded a little hole, uh, or even a, a divot where you can drill it out um, a bit further, so you could pop it in there. Moulding it with the fuselage, it was inevitable that um, they were going to break off, and they did, and I actually lost one. So I ended up having to um, scratch build one on the green one. So that was a bit of a shame. The photo etch is well worth it. The added level of refinement compared to the green one where I just used the plastic, uh, it is quite noticeable. I think you get away with the aerial mast on top of the canopy for sure, but the pito is is quite clunky in this scale. It's beautifully finely moulded, don't get me wrong, but it's just the scale. They, they couldn't have done it any finer, for sure. Um, so I think the photo etch, if you can get, oh, oh blimey, heart stopping moment, um, I <laughs> dropped it. Uh, I think the photo etch is well worth it. The bomb racks are just beautiful. And I think the, uh, crew mounting step thing, The uh, it's moulded as a U-shape in photo etch, which means the actual gluing surface is tiny and actually I knocked it off twice and lost it both times. So that's why on the grey one there's no crew mounting step. I think what they could do is maybe, um, again like the tail wheel, maybe just mould two little holes in there, um, tiny holes, uh, at least a you know, even if it's a bit of a guide for the drill, so uh, you can anchor it properly, or mould it as a um, uh, rectangle, and then you've got a, a better gluing surface. Even though that's a that's a butt joint, but you know, we're talking tiny little. Um, I, I hesitate to even call it a criticism, really. The uh, the paint scheme now. In the first episode, I did say that, uh, here we go, I've got the painting guides here, that I did fancy doing uh, the spotty one, and I was gonna try the Molotov, or Molotov masking, liquid masking pen. Um, that didn't work. It didn't work because the masking fluid itself was actually quite thin, which it probably needs to be to actually get through the pen. Uh, so it was incredibly difficult to remove, but also the nib on the pen was just too big. Even on the uh, the, the the final one I've got, it, it was just too big. So um, it looked rubbish. So I ended up having to sand it all off, and I just went for the all-over grey one, which actually, with those big white panels, is, is actually a very nice scheme. The weathering in the end, I just limited that to a panel line wash. I did a sludge, sludge wash with the oil brushes and left it at that. Bearing in mind the scale, it is tidy, so any weathering I think would just look a little bit out of place. I could have done just the hint of a exhaust stain down the fuselage, but I think in hindsight, no, nah, no, nah, uh, I think it's better just left as is. And there we are, that's it really. Um, all that's left to say is I really love how they turned out. They're beautiful little kits. The moulding is amazing. The interior detail, as I've mentioned, is just beautiful. It's such a shame it's all, it's all hidden. But um, yeah, lovely, lovely, lovely kits. And I hope Clearprop do some more 144 stuff. I know they do the Mohawk. But um, if they can expand their range, then um, yeah, I'm in, definitely. 
I really hope they shrink the MiG-23 down. I think that would be stunning. There we are. I hope you enjoyed that um, as much as I did building them and painting them. And I'll see you on the next one. So cheers. Bye-bye.